Hi everyone, my name is Hayden. I'm here today to talk about uh, CSS grids, which are essentially a way of making grid structures in CSS. Now, historically, if we wanted to make grid structures in CSS, we would typically use tables. We would make things like, uh, you'd have a table and it would have a row, and then there might be three rows, and then for each of those rows, maybe you'd have uh, a cell, All right? So this would be a six by two by three table, right? And it's kind of what you do. And if you wanted to have different and strange table structures, you would tend to have to um, basically do this, but in, in kind of weird and wacky ways. Like for instance, if I wanted to join um, these like three rows, if I want those ones to be together, like as if I'm in Microsoft Word and I just, I want to make a table. Um, Cause I mean, that, that's kind of what grids are, right? In a way they're kind of like tables. Uh, if I wanted to make a table like this and I wanted to merge these together, if I do this in Word, I can just merge them together. But if I wanted to do this with like old school HTML, I would typically have to do some funky commands. Like uh, in the case of TD, I would say that I want this particular TD to span three rows. And then I would have to get rid of these two. And then it would look like this. And it, it gets very complex very quick. Um, it's just a very kind of strange programming pattern but this is the way you, you've been able to do it for 20 years maybe um, along came floats um, that's in another lecture about CSS like the ability to, to float elements um, and then flex uh, came about uh, more recently into the CSS standard previously kind of like 10 years ago if you wanted to create grid structures you actually tended to use um, CSS libraries. I don't remember the names of them, but there would be CSS libraries, like CSS grid library. Um, and what you would do, Blueprint might be an example, except this one might be more advanced, but there'd be libraries like this that aren't built into your browser and you would instead have to, um, to kind of import them in a way. So you'd actually have to like include the CSS from another source. So, um, you know, this isn't quite a great example, but you'd actually have to import something to make something work if you wanted some fancier grids. But nowadays, CSS has some great built-in grid support. Now, that's really exciting because, um, you know, it's less you have to do, which is really good. Um, and the cool thing about grids in particular is that because there's so much less for you to do, um, there's actually a lot less for us to teach as well because most of what we would teach you um, can actually be found pretty quickly. Like if you go to Google and you type in CSS grids, the top link is the link I've got here at the start of the lecture. Um, and it's a CSSTricks.com article where they essentially take you through um, how CSS grids work. And this is why one thing we're very lucky with when it comes to web development is that there are a lot of great online resources out there. Um, and this is actually an extremely extensive article that you could spend honestly like a few hours kind of reading through and trying out but the point of this lecture is not to teach you everything that's here because there's no way that we could in a reasonable amount of time match what is ma match this which is probably effectively you know dozens and dozens maybe hundreds of hours of, of uh, people's time gone into communicating this kind of educational piece but I'm just going to try and show you the very basics so that you feel like you have a practical grip on CSS grids which you might find useful for assignments and stuff so I'm just going to do a very slim HTML page here um, with you know HTML and body uh, and then I'm gonna just gonna add some styles and the styles are gonna be at the bottom uh, uh, I'll put them at the top all right let's do this properly otherwise I'll get in trouble so um, not fully properly half properly okay so what I've got is I think one difference with a CSS grid is that it's not like a um, HTML table. You don't really define it like a table. It's it's structured a lot more closer to a Flexbox style. So you're actually kind of better off starting from Flexbox and moving your way into CSS grids than any kind of older school uh, technique like tables. So first things first, when you create a grid in CSS, it, it always exists in some kind of container, right? It's a little bit like with uh, an HTML table. It all exists inside one kind of parent container. And in this case, we're going to create a div, which we will call, we will call in this case container, because that's what um, it is defined as in this article as well. And then we will give a basic style to container, which is display grid. Now you might remember display has a bunch of attributes like display block, display inline block, um, 
display inline, and then when flex came along, they had display flex, for instance. But in this case, we're going to say display grid. We're not going to talk about inline level grids, that's another thing you can look at yourself, but grid is the standard one. And what this does is this tells the browser that <coughs> elements inside of this container can be rendered like a grid. Now, when you have elements inside of your grid, um, you're going to have to specify the size of those elements. And what we will do at the start is let's just create a 3x3 three three grid. Something really simple, something with just 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and they can all be the same size. So if we want to create something like that, then inside of our display grid container, we can specify two key properties, which is the grid template columns. And what this is, is this, this is the size of each column. Because remember, unlike flex, grids are always structured um, in a way that you, you can always divide it into a shape like this, right? It always looks like a grid. The thing with flex boxes, you can do all kind of weird, wacky arrangements, but grids are a little bit more rigid. So grid template columns. Um, I'm going to give them all a size of 50 pixels. So I give it three values because I'd like my grid to have three columns. Um, and then I can also specify the grid template rows. And that's saying each row is going to be uh, 50 pixels. So now I've got that. Now let's see what it looks like when I render it. Okay, not quite anything yet. Well, I mean, that's because like this table's sitting up here, right? Um, and you can actually see that it's made that grid for me. If I make this page slightly bigger, um, you can see that the browser is rendering the grid, right? 350 pixel, oh, I can't point to it, but you know, you can see it. <laughs> oh no, it's gonna lose my, uh, yeah, it's like up here, 350 pixel side things. Um, but there's nothing actually inside of it yet. So how do we, um, how do we put things inside of that? You know, how do we actually fill those elements? Well, I mean, you know, we can try it out. What happens if we just put a div in here? Where does that go? So what we're going to do is we, we put this div inside of the container and let's say that inside this container um, I put a few elements here, B and C. Now let's see what happens. So by default, the way that a grid will work is that if it sees components inside of it, it will just start filling those cells with those different components. Now this can be pretty useful if you want some pretty standard structure, right? If you're just looking for a structure that it basically emulates a table. Um, now, one benefit of grids, in particular, is that they can be um, they can be like pretty flexible too. So you notice here how I gave these a column width of 50 pixels, and that 50 pixels defined how wide these boxes are. But in um, in CSS grids, we can actually use another property, which I believe they talk about somewhere. Um, wonder where the first place they talk about it is. Just get my facts right yep so the fr unit now the fr unit stands for fraction and what fraction here means is like what fraction of the free space is it going to take up now this can be really handy because instead of saying 50 pixels 50 pixels you could say one fraction so it doesn't really matter all these numbers could be one they could be two they could be three you're essentially defining ratios a lot like flexbox and that's really cool because now you can see it's actually responsibly adjusting to the size of the page. See that? So those elements are taking up more the more space they have. You also notice that if I make these two FR, it could be three FR. It doesn't actually do the same because if you remember the, the way elements work in HTML and CSS is that um, by default block elements have full width that they can occupy um, and by default they have no height and they're only as high as the elements inside of them demand. So if I actually want this grid to take up the full space of the window, I need to explicitly set the container height to be something bigger, like 200 pixels, right? Or alternatively, I could set the container height to be 100%, and then it will fill up the entire space of the window, like that. So we're kind of getting there now. I could make a few more of these, you know, E, F, G, H, I, like this, and we could fill up all those boxes. Um, however, in reality, quite often, you actually want to make more interesting structures. And this is where the, um, the grid template areas comes in, which is kind of the main last point, I guess, we want to talk about. Now, the way grid template areas work is they let you easily define structures like this. So basically, if you think about like merging cells in Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word, or Google Sheets or Google um, Docs, 
it's the same kind of principle where what I want to say here is, you know what, I want all of those top things to be a header and then those, that, you know, to that to be main, that to be sidebar, that to be footer. And this is a four by three example, but we can actually do this with our own three by three example. And the way that grid template areas takes in uh, arguments is it takes in a string and that string is basically space separated words and then um, you know a line a string for each like row that exists and it describes what um, content you want that to fill so on our one what I'd really like is for it to be header 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 and then I'd like it to be uh, sidebar main main and then I'd like it to be footer 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 right so what that means is that in this kind of grid structure it would cut the page would you know look like this where I got like a header up the top a footer down the bottom a little sidebar on the left and then the rest of that chunk is the main components now if I just do that by itself nothing particularly interesting happens here because I actually have to go and define these elements so what I'm gonna do here is I'll then say um, I'm gonna create a div called header and it's gonna have a grid area of header now by giving it a grid area of header this is how I correlate this name here of grid area to this part here so if this thing was called cactus then this thing here needs to be called cactus this is just a class name you can call this anything you want right so next thing i'm going to do um, is define the other two so i want sidebar and main and footer so this one will be called sidebar um, this one will be called main and then this one will be called footer now, instead of having to explicitly specify all nine cells, what I'm going to do instead is just define four, which are my four elements. So I'm going to say div class equals header. I'll say header like that. Um, and I'll make four more. And then I'll have my sidebar one. I believe these can be defined in any order. So I'll kind of up to you. So I have main and then we have footer. And then similarly here, you also don't need to use classes. You could also use... Um, the HTML tags. Like if you wanted to, you could actually just override the header tag so that this here is just the header tag itself. That's another way of doing it. Some would argue that's even better because you're making use of the semantics that already exist in HTML. So, yep, we try this. Let's load this one up. Now, when I have a look at the container, check out that. Now, you notice that the alignment seems funny because of how the text is automatically aligning. So what I'm going to do instead here is I'm going to give these all colors. I'll give this one a color of red. Um, I'll give this next one, I'll give these next two, uh, you know, colors of blue and green and yellow. Now have a look at it. Um, photo air. You can see how it's been structured. Now notice that the proportions of these cells are the same as what we defined at the start which is basically that these are all equal ratio. Now remember, this number doesn't matter here because it's a ratio. So if they're all the same, it's gonna give you the exact same size. Now what happens um, on a typical web page is that sometimes you might want some things to be fixed. So let's say I always want the sidebar to be exactly 100 pixels. Well, what I can do here is I can actually say that my first column, which is where the sidebar is, should always be 100 pixels. And then what happens is when the fractions are trying to calculate how much space to take up together, what that ratio is, what they use is they use all of the remaining space that has not been absolutely defined. So how this will get spaced is that sidebar will be spaced with 100 pixels, and then the rest of the space that's taken up by those two columns will be um, distributed evenly. So when I refresh that, you'll see that sidebar is now um, 100 pixels. Oops, sorry. So yeah, so you see how those columns are laid out? And then this is useful because then from a scaling perspective now, the sidebar is always the same size and the main content kind of kind of shrinks because you might be tempted to say, okay, well, if I want my sidebar to be small, maybe I'll make that 0.2 of a fraction. But the problem is now your sidebar is going to expand and contract with the page, which you might not want. You'll also notice here that there's um, certain minimum sizes. It's not squashing this content any further. For instance, if I just replace this with S exclamation mark, we would get this squash smaller because it'll be happy to go as small as it can without the um, without kind of crushing the underlying element. So um, now that we've got that, we can also maybe adjust our um, header. So let's make our header and our footer both a fixed size as well. And this is how you can very quickly create like nice responsive web pages, right? So when I look at a web page like this, you see how I've got my fixed header, my fixed footer. My footer is probably a little bit 
big. Um, same with my header, so let's make those a little bit smaller. Um, and now you can see what happens is no matter how I resize the page, the header and the footer stay the same size, but the, um, and the sidebar does too, but the main content actually grows and shrinks. And this can be a really handy way to, to define a page. And when I hover over it um, with the mouse, you can see how the grid is, is maintained. It's maintained through just as normal a series of rows and a series of columns. It's just we're defining how it's sized. We are defining elements in here that take up that space. Um, and yeah, it's really quite simple at the, at the easy end. Um, one cool thing about CSS grids is that you can, um, I'm going to skip a couple things here. You can actually apply the same justify items and align items that you do with um, Flexbox. So for instance, if I want these, these text, actually let me, let me just make this text white so it's easy to see. Um, oh, that doesn't work for down there. <laughs> okay. Black it is. Um, so, you know, I've got this text here, right? And I really want to make the font bigger. I'm sorry. Uh, yep. So, um, what happens is I can move that content around by updating my container by using justify justify content. Now remember justify content, what it will do is it will move it in like across a row, right? Um, and this is the standard, uh, I think what's the syntax? Is it start end? Yeah, so it's not quite flex start, flex end and center and stuff, but um, it is like kind of the same like end. So if I do end here, um, oh, that's not working. That's really weird. Why is that? Justify items, justify, oh, justify items. Sorry, sorry, wrong thing. Um, now what you'll notice here is that all the colors have just gotten weird and that's because by default, the justify items property that's used is stretch, which fills the whole width of the cell. So what this is doing here, right, is the text itself, those divs are um, basically like inline block elements that are only taking up as much space as the text demands. And because we're aligning them right, they're only being as wide as the space they demand and then they're moving all the way to the side. So if we wanted to keep those full sized but move the text to the side, we'd probably be more likely to leave it as stretch, which is the default. Um, and then if we wanted to, we could come in here and probably actually just text align center these, right? Or text align right, if we wanted to. So you can see there's lots of different ways of solving this problem depending on what you're actually trying to achieve. Um, and then you, we also have align items. So you can actually see here the justify items shows you like what the start and end and center and stretch does. And then align items is the vertical alignment. So for instance, if I do align items here and I say start, I think it's start. Yeah, it's start. Um, you can see again, it all gets sucked up to the top. And if I say end, it's all gonna get sucked down to the end, right? Cause they're gonna, they're gonna go to the bottom of their containers. Notice how here, they're all taking up the minimum space necessary at the bottom of each of the grids that they're allocated to. Um, and yeah, it's the same kind of thing. And align items is by default stretch as well. It, yeah, I think it's by default stretch because that's the kind of nature that grids are. Like in general with grids, you want things to stretch by default. So um, yeah, there's a lot more you can read through this. Like there's place items, um, which does both align and justify items at the same time. Some of the syntax inside the grid um, kind of language example here is uh, shortcuts, like shorthand versions of it. Like I'm pretty sure there's some there's some grid syntax um, gap. Yeah, so there's this syntax up here, for instance, called like column gap and row gap, where like if you want to define some space between the columns, you can say that my column gap. Um, oh, did I spell that wrong? Column gap is like two pixels, and that will create kind of like a margin. It's, I don't want to quite call it a margin because um, here's what you'll notice with column gap. If all of these components had a margin, then you'd also have a margin on the very outside. Um, but a column gap is kind of like, it, it only creates the gap between elements, not on the outside of elements. So I could also create a, uh, a row gap, which would create space between vertical rows. And the row gap might be two pixels too. So that's how, for instance, you could create some space there. Um, but you'll see some of this article, right? Like some of this article is talking about column gaps and row gaps, but other parts of this article are just talking about gaps, which is just a shorthand way of doing both gaps at once. So it's a little bit like how you can write margin in CSS in a succinct way. Um, you can also do a similar thing here where you just say, you know what, 
the grid gap is two pixel to two pixel two pixel um, or because it's the same just like margins and borders you can just say two pixel and you'll get two pixel so it's a lot to read here there's probably other articles but um, if you're looking for kind of like a, a textbook if you will this is a great place to look these guys have uh, incredible examples for css but um, yeah have fun with your grids